Hey, welcome back. In this video, I just want to go over the three different types of motion that we're going to experience in these rigid body rotation problems. Um, we have basically just translation, rotation, and general motion. So if we have this box here, then we can demonstrate each of the types of motion. So translation is simply just moving it around. Um, if it moves without rotating, it can move in a straight line, it can move in a circle, it can move in a curved path, etc. But as long as all points are you know, parallel to each other, their original orientation, then we consider this translation, just moving something like that. Rotation is just like you would assume, just rotation about a fixed point. So in this case, rotating about the central point, that counts as rotation. Or if we rotate it about some other point that's not the center, just rotation about any point is rotational motion. And if we had general motion, that's just if we combine both of them. So I think with the way that my mouse is set up right now, I can't translate and rotate, but you get the point if it was moving at the same time, you know, flying through the air, flipping like that, um, that would be considered general motion. Just a combination of translation and rotation. So specifically talking about translation, let's bring up these little paths. So again, if we have our object, if it is moving in a straight path without actually rotating about any point, this is called um, linear translation. If it's moving along a curved path and also not rotating, that would be considered curvilinear translation. But these are both considered the like translation in general, moving like that. And if it was rotating while we were going along, you know, something like this, or you know, you could even be going like that way as it went, then again that would be considered general motion, whether it's following a curved path or a straight path as it goes. And if it's not following a path at all, if it's just staying stationary, like I said, we consider that to be rotational, uh, rotational movement, just like that, pure rotation in a plane about a fixed axis that is perpendicular to that plane. So one big application of this is the movement of machine parts, things like crankshafts, etc. So if we just bring up an animation that I made of a crankshaft. So if we look at the different parts of this, um, we can see that yeah, if we look at maybe focusing at this crank right here, it's experiencing rotational motion. And we can actually hide everything else to really illustrate that. You can see it's just rotating about this axis right here that's perpendicular to the plane of the page or the screen. If we bring everything back again and focus on the piston now, we can see it's just moving to the right and the left in a straight line without rotating. So it's experiencing linear translation. And we can just focus right on that piece to really illustrate that, you know, it's just going to the right and the left in a straight line without any rotation or change in path. So that is linear translation. If we bring back everything again, and we focus on this kind of purplish bluish bar that's staying horizontal, it's actually experiencing, because it's not rotating, it's experiencing curvilinear translation. So let's hide everything else and take a closer look. So if you look carefully at it, you can see the actual member isn't rotating itself. The fact that it's following a circular path uh, doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that it's rotating, it's just moving in a curved path, which happens to be circular, but the object itself is not rotating. Which is similar to the box at the beginning of the video. You can imagine if it was just moving in a curved path, we consider that to be translation because the box itself isn't rotating. All right, let's go back to the full mechanism again. And if we look at this yellow bar, it's the connecting rod that connects the crank to the piston. It's actually experiencing both translation and rotation. So let's uh, hide everything else and just focus on that. So if we inspect it closely, we can see it's oscillating from side to side. The whole thing is translating to the left and then to the right. But because of, so all you can see on this end, it's experiencing a rotation. Basically, it's always rotating about its right side. Um, there's a relative rotation of the left side about the right, whether it's going up or down as it's kind of oscillating and switching directions. So this is considered general motion and it's the more complicated form of motion compared to translation or just basic rotation. 
But often with these machine type problems, um, we're going to be experiencing this for at least one member in the system, and we're going to have to analyze the, the different aspects of its velocity and acceleration to basically solve some type of problem. So if we bring back the crankshaft, then we should recognize that there's going to be relationships going on between these members. We have pure rotational motion here, we have pure linear translation here and general motion in between, but they're all connected and they're all working together. So if we know some information about some of the motion, for example, the angular velocity of the crank, then we'll be able to take our knowledge of that, the current geometry of the position of it and maybe like the tip speed of that pin that connects the crank to the connecting rod. And we'll be able to use a few other methods um, that I'm going to go over in the next few videos to basically transfer the information that we know from one part of a machine to the other part. And we'd be able to find, the, for example, the velocity of the piston at any different position that this, um, that this mechanism could be in. So the methods that we'll be using for analysis are relative motion analysis. There's kind of two ways we can go about it. One is called vector and one is called scalar analysis. Um, they basically do the same thing. And then we're also going to take a look at instantaneous center of zero velocity. That's another really convenient. I think it's actually the fastest way to analyze these problems. And then also we're going to look into absolute motion analysis. Um, so yeah, join me in the next couple of videos and I'm going to go over examples of all of those different types, uh, different ways that we can analyze these rigid body rotation problems.